Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. OTM versus Gallows and Anderson. Lucian, Lucian Price was the second guy in this show to do a standing ovation. So Doc Gallows gets a hot tag. And I, wait, I looked, at, I looked at the sentence I just typed. So wait, are, the, are OC the baby faces in this feud? They're all brawling. Meechin comes out through the crowd to attack Jada. The match continues. I think this was a baby face match, but it was the way it happened to work. Yeah. And uh, out the mud pinned Anderson with a two man spine buster thing. I mean, there was a little bit of a, a, a pause when the women were fighting, but there was only like, distraction or interference. Well, no, they, what you missed, the, 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 the reason that this happened was because Bronco hit a knee to the back of Carl when Bronco was not legal, which, because of the secret rule, should have been a DQ. Oh. He cheated. All right, I missed that entirely. Yes. Yeah. Because it's a stupid rule. Okay. Because the illegal man breaks up pins all the time. And how do you do that? By hitting the legal man. But if you're not breaking up a pin, if you hit, if the illegal man hits the legal man in a tag match, according to Vince, that's a DQ. Right. It's never been stated. It's a secret rule. Everybody abides by it, but the fans don't know it. And that's what happened here. And I was like, why are we still fucking doing this? We get a video shot on a phone of somebody burying Sol Ruka for losing. I did not recognize her. But based on what everyone said later, it was Fallon Henley. Yes. Apparently, she straightened her hair for this video and then made it wavy again for her match later. All right. So she's, uh, she buries uh, Sol Ruka. And so we go to Kelly interviewing Sol Ruka. And uh, says, in this company, you either put in the work or you just bitch. I put in the work. It's pretty obvious who Fallon is. The no quarter catch crew dump a body into a trunk. I don't know why they didn't hire Tony D and his crew. Well, because, Brian. They're feuding with him? Because Charlie Dempsey wants to be a mobster. I see. I hadn't thought of He's that. He's emulating You're Tony D and his crew. absolutely right. I forgot about that. Yes, yes. This is the weirdest fucking gimmick. Yes. That's how we're going to get this guy some personality. He's going to pretend to be Tony D. He's pretending to guy who's pretending okay. to be a mobster. Whatever. Tavion Heights is very confused. <laughs> Not upset. Just confused. Do you guys do this often, he asks. There is some woman there who insists she did not see anything. We were told it's Ren Sinclair. Yes. But yes, the No Quarter Cash Crew also murders people these days. And this is how Damon Kemp is written off the show. He was a cat attacked and killed by his own crew. Dumped into a trunk and then thrown into an alligator swamp or something. Charlie should uh, start growing basil. <laughs> he should. He's going to get his own, he should get his own garden. He needs a garden. He needs a garden, but it has to suck. Yes. Nothing will grow. He's got like moss and mushrooms. Well, he's starting a garden in fucking July in Florida, so he ain't going to be <laughs> nothing growing. What could go wrong? But he could try. So this Fallon Henley Sol Ruka match. Yeah. So, you know, didn't have a ton of heat early. Sol. You know, got lost a little bit before the finish. Boy, did she. But she hit the soul snatcher, and then Jasmine and JC ran in later out for the DQ, which got booed a lot. But I do have to say, like, hey, I'm going to get so mad at me, but I'm off Twitter now, so who gives a fuck? It's an actual wrestling match. This was so much better than that Kalani Jordan match hmm. because so much more of this, like, this wasn't just a choreographed gymnastics routine. It was like they put together a match. And it wasn't like, you know, a great match or anything like that. But this one actually felt like two people wrestling and trying to win. And uh, Sol had the win when the DQ happened. So, you know, I thought that Fallon, Fallon is, is good. Like, she's, yes. she's very good. And she did a really good job with Sol. So, yeah, uh, there's a point early on when Fallon, who is also an athlete, does a perfect cartwheel. Like a... Like a challenge to Sol Ruka to see what she can do. And so 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 Sol goes to do her walking handstand spot and Fallon kicks her right in the gut. Loved it. Awesome. <laughs> Except she was be the heel, but it was a baby face spot. A uh, baby face spot as far as I'm Walking on your fucking hands in the middle of this match, she kicked her. Yeah, yes, there was a spot where I I, I think uh, Fallon whipped Sol in the ropes and Sol just stopped and they just stared at each other for a while. Eventually they got back on track and they did a soul snatch on the DQ and that was that. Okay. Okay. I concede, Brian. You're right. Tatum Paxley is the worst gimmick in all of wrestling. Yeah. He's got an Izzy Dame doll. So uh, Anonymous, who we'll never find out who this is, but uh, the Anonymous NXT video person, they catch Tatum Paxley, who is by herself 
alone with nobody else around cutting a promo to herself. She's got a doll. She loves playing with dolls, but girls like you take them away. Why are you so above me? Underneath the skin, we're all just rotten. That was bullshit. That's my line, not hers. And uh, Wendy Chu picks up the headless doll. Give me a fucking team. I, I, I would actually be fine with that. Just take two shitty gimmicks and put them together in a one. Exactly. It's one, one less shitty gimmick segment per so. Yes. We see through the glass, the virgin is apparently in Ava's office pleading his case of some kind. Cedric then meets with Ava. Mm-hmm. I assume this is Cedric Alexander. It is Cedric Alexander. Nobody ever called him that. It's just Cedric. Yes. He is officially in NXT. For reasons I cannot fathom, this bothers Mr. Stone. Because Stevie set it up. They're rivals. That's never been Battling for the attention of Ava. And so Stone has brought in a Shanti V. Who's got these two marks to do her job that Shawn Michaels assigned her to do. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) You know, I think about it. This is the most realistic storyline in NXT. <laughs> so Mr. Stone has brought in a Shanti the Adonis. We're just throwing names left and right of this place. We have two matches introduced for next week or uh, advertised next week. Oba Femi versus Duke Hudson and Gallus versus the Rascals. And then it is Ethan Page and Sean Spears versus Trick Williams in the world's least surprising mystery partner. God damn, this Joe Henry was so over. Oh, yeah. He was more over than Trick. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And It is so fucking amazing because, like, nothing against TNA. Like, you review him every week. Yeah. My good buddy Lance works there. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, let's be honest. No one's watching the show. Right. It does, like, a few hundred thousand viewers every week. Yet, these TNA guys coming into NXT... This NXT crowd, fuck, it doesn't matter who you are. Somebody could come in from WOW. They're like, <laughs> oh my fucking God, the farmer's daughter's here. Like, they're so excited. Yeah. Like, Joe Hendry comes in, and it's just like, they're going nuts. And if you look at, like, the viewership of of NXT, like, they did a .24 this week. And and honestly, you know, TNA does like a 0.01. Mm-hmm. Yet somehow these... TNA stars are mega stars to this NXT audience. I don't know what like the national television audience thinks. You know, they're probably like, "Who the fuck is this blonde guy that everyone's going crazy for?" I never heard of this guy before. But like the people in the building, oh, yeah. they're like, "Holy shit! I can't believe that guy's here!" So he comes out, huge ovation, does his whole entrance, plays the whole song, waves his hands from side to side, and says, "Booker T is I." You know, a former TNA wrestler does not watch it often. What is wrong with these people, he asks. <laughs> but by the end, I believe he did, in fact, believe in Joe Henry. He noted, when uh, your name is over before you even come out, that's when you know you're, you made it. They did a you know, very simple tag match. Everyone here knows what the hell they're doing. They got the heat on Joe for a long time. He was a great babyface in peril. But he tags in Trick, who does like two moves, and he's immediately cut off. Then he's the babyface in peril. Henry tags back in. I just watched Impact the day before I watched this, and his comeback on this show was significantly better than the comeback he made on Impact. Maybe coincidence, or maybe may not be a coincidence, that the ovation he was getting was much was much hotter too. But he he gets the SOS slam into a kip up, and there's a slow walk and the whip around for the camera. And Vic says, "Man, that's better than a spinner Rooney." Booker says, "No, it wasn't." I laughed. Uh. So somewhere in here, uh, Oro attacked Ethan again, and they brought out of the building. So Spears is left alone. He eats a trick shot outside, gets thrown in, and Joe hits a standing ovation and wins. And remember, not even two months ago, after the draft, I looked around the NXT roster and said, if you look at it, this roster kind of sucks right now. It, if the, Assuming these guys are here for a bit, it's gotten significantly better. Yeah, and you know, added I was, a lot uh, of good names. I was on the board, and there were people like, you know, I like the Joe Hendry gimmick and everything, but like, I just I don't think he's very good in the ring. And There's... I watched this match, and like, he was fine. And granted, it's it's NXT. It's NXT, and it's... I mean, we've seen a lot that is not fine. It, it's it's. But I mean, he fit in just fine here in this main event. There it... was nothing wrong with it. No, it's NXT, and it's 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 Trick was very talented, and Ethan and and Spears are total pros. They all know what to do. He has some 
good days and bad days. And, and the bad days are not so much like NXT bad where they're forgetting spots or falling all over each other or anything. He, he's an athletic guy. There are days when his charisma on the microphone does not translate to the ring. Mm. This was not one of them. He was totally fine here. Yeah, he was super over, and yeah. it was a good main event, and it was great heat. The TNA guys got a win. Poor fucking Javon beaten to a crisp. <laughs> beaten to a crisp? Yeah. Wow. He's beaten so bad he's crispy. He burned. <laughs> yeah, fuck. <laughs> That's about where we are right now. I, you're not wrong. I mean... Yeah. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.